What's up, everybody? This is Jacob Deaton, and I am back again with another episode of Southern Wedding Professionals. And today I am honored to speak with Intrigue Events and the mastermind behind all of this. Um, tell us all about you. What's oh. going on? Oh, man. Um, well, we are in a pandemic and I own an event company. <laughs> so there's that. Um, no, <laughs> we, I mean, we're, we're completely cut into the chase. Um, but honestly, uh, Intrigue has been around since 2008. Uh, it's my second company. Um, my first company was a graphic design and marketing firm. Uh, I never thought I'd get into events, but, but here we are. So all is good in Charleston right now. The sun is shining. Yeah, you guys just had like a hurricane almost or a tropical storm almost a hit you guys. Tropical storm almost hit us. It stayed off the coast. We got some of the bands um, and then it picked up speed and actually ended up hitting Myrtle Beach, I believe. Um, and I haven't seen too much destruction or anything from it. I need to kind of just follow up um, and just make sure everybody up there is okay. But, um, but yeah, we got lucky. Yeah, I, I didn't actually know that it hit Myrtle Beach. Um, so it did squarely hit Myrtle Beach or did it just skirt by? I think it just skirt. I think it just went on up and, and kind of skirt around, but the eye was closer to them than it was to us. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, uh, well, thank you so much for being here. Um, usually in the beginning, uh, just to get some formalities out of the way, I yeah. ask everybody to introduce uh, who they are, what they do, just basic broad strokes of maybe what you do, what you don't do. Uh, and then we'll get into the history of how you got here. We'll eventually get into like your philosophies on all kinds of uh, interesting topics that we have to talk about in today's climate. But um, Chelsea, why don't you go ahead and tell us uh, a little bit about Intrigue? Yeah, so Intrigue is a full service uh, event design company. Um, we do everything from weddings to social events to corporate events. Um, we also do a lot of ticketed events and festivals um, before, uh, well, a little bit ago we did. Now we're, we're pivoting a bit, um, which we can get into, but uh, we mm -hmm. also run a venue management side um, of our company. So we do consulting with developers um, and venues to help them get organized in PR and marketing and sales um, and kind of go from there and, and assist them with growing for about a year. And then we'll hand it off and, and let their team go and continue on. So we wear a lot of hats. We're, we're not one, um, I wouldn't say we're like a boutique style company um, necessarily because we do a lot of different things, but when it comes to weddings and social events and, and clients, um, we are, are kind of particular. We want to make sure that our personalities match and that we're mm -hmm. a good fit for them. That's something that's really important. Uh, we only take on a certain amount of weddings a year. So um, we just want to make sure that we're able to give them what their vision is um, and, and kind of bring that to life as well. Awesome. So we're talking weddings, we're talking uh, like corporate social events, I would corporate imagine. Corporate social events, and conferences. Then, uh, conferences, those types of things. That's really cool. Um, I can't yeah. wait to dive into that part. Uh, but then also you mentioned the ticketed events. Yeah. Um, let's, uh, let's start with it because that's just a little um, – left of center for most of the people that I get a chance to talk to, I'd love to start there. So yeah. tell me traditionally what you've done with like ticketed events and uh, sort of the range of uh, events that you've done in that world. And then also uh, you can put a button on it with like where we are right now and how that's been affected. Right. Um, so the ticket events across the board, it kind of depends on the client. So it depends on if we're doing it for a client or if we're doing it in-house. Um, we've done a lot with, like we just partnered with Voov um, and did a fried chicken. Uh, everyone got a bucket of fried chicken and a bottle of Voov. And we had music and entertainment and it was, uh, it was quirky and Southern, but amazing. Um, we also hosted um, Charleston Wonderland, which is this uh, massive uh, Cirque du Soleil performers um, New Year's Eve event for about 800, 900 people or so. Um, we've done that for seven years. This year is the first year that we, uh, that we won't be doing it. Oh, um, so that's always been fun. Um, we partner with a lot of charities and do galas and fundraising events, auctions. 
Um, and then outside of that, uh, Charleston Food and Wine. I don't know if you've ever um, heard of that, but if you haven't, you should definitely look them up. They're amazing. Um, they're one of our big partners and we go in and do um, assistance with their sponsorships, uh, designing um, decks for them to come in if they have like a 10 by 20 space or a 10 by 10 space. Uh, we got to do the Today Show um, when they were here in Charleston and design like this faux kitchen um, for their uh, book signings and um, their little chats and their um, video recording when they did live stuff here in Charleston for the Today Show, which was cool and the Food Network. Um, mm. We're kind of, I don't know, we're, we're a little all over the board. It's not like one little thing that we get into. It's honestly like my girls look at me like I'm crazy all the time. So I'm like, guess what we're doing today? Right. <laughs> They're like, you're nuts, but it's fun. <laughs> I love that ambition because, you know, uh, I kind of am like that myself or I, mm -hmm. I have a tendency to, 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 to have that sort of um, uh, ambition and creativity. Um, and, right. and like, I always admire that out of other people. When they see an opportunity, they look at it as a, not as something that they don't do and they right. don't want to uh, involve themselves in, but they look at it as an opportunity as this could be something that my company maybe could grow into. Mm -hmm. For sure. We, um, it's crazy. I started out doing corporate events. Well, my first business was a marketing and graphic design company and we started doing like pro product launches and grant openings for restaurants or working with developers if they wanted to um, stage kind of like a series if they had like a new house that they were um, going to be launching in a particular neighborhood or design. And um, I never thought that like weddings was something. So it's funny how I went from corporate to full on weddings back into corporate and, and ticketing events and things of that nature. But I think if you're creative, like you really can just, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything. That's just it allows me to not not necessarily get bored, but I never want to get complacent. I never want to be like, this is just the thing I do. Um, we're always looking for, for something fun and interesting um, to get into. Right. That's so cool. I love that spirit. That's uh, That speaks to my heart for sure. Um, you hinted at uh, sort of how you got started. So I think now's a good time to maybe just start with that. Like, let's go back to the beginning. What were you doing? You know, how did you fall in? You, you kind of mentioned that you fell into this. I so did. like, how did, um, how did this whole organic process take place to, you know, basically walk us through, a, a, I guess, a general timeline from where you started and where you were and where you are now? Yeah. Um, geez. Uh, so let's see, 2004, the end of 2004, um, I had moved to Hilton Head uh, from Clemson and um, wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, um, but I knew that eventually I would want to do some sort of entrepreneurship. Uh, both my parents are entrepreneurs, and I like the flexibility and the freedom. I guess the romanticism in it. I, I liked that until I actually learned what being an entrepreneur is. Um, but it was, <laughs> I know, it, it's a lot of work. Um, but the kind of going from i started a graphic design and marketing company with a partner um and so we had that for about four years and during that time we did do a lot of um corporate events and promotions and things of that nature like i like i mentioned um and then we started hiring like we were outsourcing a lot of the planning and design um and being kind of a a type personality a little ocd sometimes um i wasn't quite uh I guess the best word is they weren't the people who we were hiring weren't quite living up to what our expectations were um, for our clients and just the delivery methods that we wanted to do and kind of thinking a little bit more outside of the box with some some cool and creative ideas. Um, so we just kind of started doing that in house uh, for the last two years that I owned the business. Um, and then at, but right before I ended up selling it to my partner, um, one of our clients asked us if we would plan their wedding. And I was like, no, I've never done a wedding. I don't want to do weddings. <laughs> weddings is not something that is my forte. Um, I just, the, the pressure, like I couldn't imagine, you know, I was just thinking like, if I mess up, like this is the biggest day of your life, you know? Um, so they're like, no, we trust you. We've been working with you now for three years. Like you get us, you understand us, um, please do it. And so I was like, I couldn't tell them no, because they were clients. <laughs> um, but I said, okay, well, let me think about this. And they're like, no, you have three weeks and we want to do it in Atlanta. 
and we were in Hilton Head at the time. And so I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so that was just another wrench in, in the, like, we have like a year to plan this, right? And they're like, no, you have three weeks. Um, it was an intimate wedding. So there was about 40 people there. Um, we did it at the W downtown Atlanta. I went up mm -hmm. to Atlanta for two weeks. Um, so we, we talked and we chatted for that first week. And then I actually spent two weeks straight in Atlanta. Um, and then after that, and after the craziness and the three weeks, and I know it was quick, but seeing their faces when they walked into the reception and seeing them at the ceremony and kind of just that emotional connection, it was probably one of the most rewarding things I had ever done up, up to that point. Um, and I fell in love with just wanting to have something to do with love. Um, and just knowing that I might want to take you know, my career, my creativityness and, and the design aspect of what I did um, and turn it on to weddings. And so about a year later, Intrigue was born in 2008 and, uh, and here we are. So we've been doing weddings and events ever since. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. So tell me, like you get done with this wedding, it's moving, it's amazing. You get a new perspective on life and now you are trying to figure out um, uh, how do you integrate this into your life? Was it immediate or was it something that sort of built over time? Yeah, it was definitely a process. I knew that going into it, it was something that I really enjoyed and really loved and kind of that um, fulfillment, um, being able to be a part of someone's day was, was very special. Uh, but I knew nothing about wedding planning and you know, kind of digging and doing some research and looking into it. Um, not every venue is like, you know, a full service W hotel where they pretty much provide everything and then you just get to make it look pretty. <laughs> so I kind of did a little bit more, more research. I did decide to sell my business, um, you know, after that in the beginning of 2008. And I knew that doing events and kind of doing design was something that I definitely wanted to move forward with. I didn't want to do the marketing and branding and being on my computer all day. Um, like we were. So I started Intrigue at the end of 2008. And it took me a good, I'd say year and a half to two years to really develop what is Intrigue and, and who am I and, and what does our brand look like and what do we offer. Um, and of course, as we all know, during this time, also the market had crashed. Uh, so um, starting a business um, and selling my business was probably not the best move. But ultimately, I knew it was kind of what my passion was. And I was going to figure it out one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, so I moved to Charleston and, um, and started Intrigue. And then I started working with um, Middleton uh, Plantation, which is this beautiful um, garden uh, in Charleston and assisted them with kind of redeveloping um, their marketing, their branding, and their sales for weddings and events. So it gave me a glimpse into from like the venue side of like expectations and things to think about and how do the couples um, engage with the venue, but then also how do they engage with like their other vendors and then working with other planners. Um, so I did that for about two years after that too. So it was a good three or four years before Intrigue was fully, you know, I, I felt good enough to fully build the foundation of, of where we're at um, and then really launch it into the Charleston market. So, so there's a lot to, um, there's a lot to unpack there. So I want to, I want to back up. A yeah. bit. So you sold, you sold your company and then you decided to say, well, you know, I'm just going to dive into this sort of head first. Um, and uh, I know you had done some research, but it sounded like that once you sort of sold the business and you, you dove into doing this, you realized like maybe how much more research there was to be done. For sure. Um, it was more so of there at the time in Charleston, Charleston was a huge Mecca for weddings and, um, and events and the planners that were here. So what I wanted to understand was like, what are all my options as far as different vendors, whether it's entertainment or rentals or lighting and design and florists and photography. And I wanted to be able to truly say that by partnering with people, I was going to be able to give our couples and our clients the, the best experience that they're looking for based on what their needs and expectations um, and vision was. And I didn't want to just jump in and just say, okay, I, I pretend to know this market um, because I didn't. And I wanted to make sure that we were kind of, and I say we at the time, it was just myself, but 
um, I wanted to make sure that I was putting the company in a good place of success. Um, you know, I think a lot of people misconstrue what planning events and weddings is. I think that they get excited about the idea because of movies or television shows or whatever, but um, there's so much that goes into it that I think that just for me, making sure that um, I was set up to, to do that was really important. Right. So what, um, so when you started this and, and you got into the whole process of figuring out who you are and, and how you fit in the marketplace and all those kinds of things, what were, what were some of the things that you were saying yes to off the bat? And what were some of the things that maybe you've grown into um, over time, you know, yeah. to make sure that you're, you're learning along the process of, you know, what you can handle and what you, what you can't. Right. Um, well, it was mostly, so saying yes, in the sense of anyone who would give me a chance, I was like, I'm going to make sure we go um, above and beyond, um, obviously to meet every expectation. Um, but I was also very like black and white. I am not pretending at this point to know everything there is to know about design or weddings or trends. Um, but what I found and what I've carried on is that what I did do is really get to know the couples. I spent an, at least an hour with them, which we still do prior to them even booking me, um, because I wanted to get a sense of their personalities and are our personalities gonna mesh. Um, having my other company and knowing what that looks like in the corporate world, if you don't have good personalities and you're with each other for a year, it's, it can be kind of a disaster. For <laughs> Um, so that was something that was really important that I wanted to carry on. So it was mostly of just saying, you know, if we get together and if this is a good fit, um, kind of here's some services that I'm comfortable with offering, uh, which was more of like the month of day of kind of thing. Um, and then I grew into doing more of the design and, um, and elements and working with properties that you only get the grass and then you have to bring everything in um, and, and being a lot more comfortable with that, you know, as we kind of learned, I, I made a lot of mistakes. I didn't have someone who was kind of showing me the ropes, um, but mistakes in a way that actually just ended up coming out even better than what we had originally had thought to. Um, so I think that there's a true learning, um, you know, process that you have to go through, especially if you've never done it before. There really is a, there really is a process here of learning, um, especially when you dive into something that, you know, you spend a lot of time working on, but you know, there's going to be some gray areas and you know, there's going to be some stuff that's just like, you don't know that's coming. Um, sure. And, um, I mean, you know, it's like family dynamics, like that was a huge learning thing. You know, mom and dad are divorced. They don't speak to each other. Aunt Sally and uncle Sam are fighting. <laughs> I mean, they're just kind of, you, you're honestly like kind of a little bit of a psychiatrist, psychologist, like during the process. Uh, <laughs> everything as well. So, I mean, that's uh that, those are things that even if there was a school for uh, wedding planning and design, yeah. I, you know, or, you know, if you were to attend a school to do that, yeah, I, I don't, you know, maybe they talk about those psycho things. Maybe they don't, you know, um, I don't know. But like, it, for me, it seems like uh, those are kind of on the job learning experiences. Those are like, for sure, learning how to deal with those personalities in real time. There's not really a rule book or a, a textbook that you could read to, you know, to give you an A, B and C on how to handle that. I don't, I don't necessarily think um, that's a touch and a feel thing. And that's something that you learn over years and years of doing this. So. For sure. Um, you kind of become like a chameleon. Like your personality is able to adapt to other personalities in the way that they react. I mean, we, I, at the beginning, we'll, we'll chat with our clients and be like, how do you, how do you communicate? How do you like to communicate? Because then I know I can better serve them if I understand, you know, what works for them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, now you've grown into what you are today and um which is beautiful um and uh everybody should check out your uh website um online which we'll have a link to this in the comments so everybody can click on that but um you're so how do you right now in um in the in your outreach of trying to reach clients are they mostly referral based i mean do you do any sort of advertising like um you know do you have any techniques as far as advertising that you'd like to talk about or is it 100% word of mouth? Because some people, it just is. 
Yeah, so we've been very lucky. I mean, all of our um, connections and, and the people that we work with, um, we have been for 13 years now. I mean, there's obviously some turnover at venues and, and you get to know new people. Um, but we are, we're on The Knot, uh, which is a great wedding platform for um, couples to go through. They have so many tricks and tools um, to go for. Um, but that, that's it. Uh, everything else is, is word of mouth. And um, I mean, we have a lot of our couples who, you know, I'll have a sister in the wedding and then three months later she might get engaged and then she calls us or um, a brother or I mean, just a friend. Um, and then we get a lot of, um, we're very thankful to, to our vendors. We get a lot of referrals from our vendors and the venues as well. If they feel like we're a good fit, then, um, then they'll send them our way. So we, the personal connection and personal relationships, um, it means the world to us. Uh, that's how we, we stay in business. <laughs> right. Well, that's, that's awesome, especially when you have those repeat customers that come back year after year, like you've been speaking of, right. um, you know, that's, you know, having that sort of foundation every single year that you can kind of rely on um, makes the uncertainty of the business um, in most times, <laughs> you know, very easily uh, handleable, you know, um, yeah. if I can. Yeah. So um, speaking of that, how are you doing? I mean, what's the, what's the status, what's the status of intrigue and um, how are your clients handling this? How are you handling this? Give us, give us the lowdown. Yeah. Um, well, I think that the industry as a whole is, is, has definitely suffered obviously over the past couple months. Um, intrigue as far as what we've been doing. Uh, it was funny. We, one of our brides, um, older brides, she's a, uh, they're already onto their first child um, now, but uh, she sent me an email and she was like, I'm so sorry to even ask this. I know things are crazy right now, but um, my girlfriend is really struggling with some things uh, with a venue in California. And I just want to give her someone to talk to. Do you mind if I send her your way? And I said, you know, absolutely. Like, please just give her my contact information. I'll set up a call with her. So we set up a call and this, <laughs> this poor bride was just, and she was just lost. She was like, my, my venue is having to close because of COVID and they're, they're not necessarily allowing us to reschedule right now, which she was like, I understand, but they're also not allowing us to just cancel. Um, vendors are kind of up in the air. They're not talking about reschedule dates quite yet. So it was just a lot for her, I think, to kind of take on when her wedding at this point was only like 45 days away, I want to say. Um, wow. And so I think that everyone kind of panicked, you know, obviously this is something that none of us have ever been through before. Um, and as we kind of talked through things and I read through her contracts and we went over everything, I was like, here's your options and this is what you can do. And this is how we need to approach it. Um, and everything worked out. She was able to get rescheduled dates. She was able to get the vendors on board. Um, I think that people were just kind of not needing to give her the runaround. I just don't think that they knew how to handle the situation. And it just took someone kind of saying, okay, let's take a deep breath here. Let's have a conversation. Let's see what our options are. And then let's go from there. Um, and when we did that, I was chatting with our team afterwards and I was like, you know, I wonder how many other couples are just not getting the help that they need right now and not knowing what direction to go. Do I postpone? Do I not postpone? Um, do I do a small elopement and then do something later? Uh, so we started another um, division of our company called Virtually Wed and did virtual consulting for these people who just need an hour or five hours to jump on a phone call and have a conversation. Um, and, and that meant a lot. Like I just, I was trying to figure out how do we do our part? You know, what's our play in all of this? And, um, and so doing that, it just, it was really helpful. So we were, we're very excited about how successful that's been and, and kind of where it's going. And I want to keep it around. I, I honestly, even after the pandemic, um, I want to give people the opportunity who might not afford a planner or maybe just have like a day of, and they're just not as abreast to contracts and dealing with contracts and vendors um, as we might be to give them that opportunity. So. What a cool idea. And yeah. if anyone that's listening to this podcast knows, I am all about the future. I am all about new ideas. I'm all about like where, where things are going in our industry and stuff. And this is a really, really cool idea. Aww. So, um, 
the idea of virtual consultations and the idea of virtual weddings, um, I guess, in, in your opinion, you, you think this is going to stick around for quite some time and people are going to start using these resources, right? I do. I think until everyone is fully comfortable um, in getting out and about again, um, I think that this is going to kind of be our, our life for the next six months to a year even. Um, I, I don't want, and I know like the big saying is like love doesn't stop. Um, and I don't want that either. I want to make sure that if like even talking with some of our couples, they're like, we have so many other life plans. Like we want to, we want to get married and then we want to, you know, move on to, to our other life engagements and, and things of that nature. So I, I just don't want people to like get lost and thinking that there's no hope or that it can't be special um, because it can. And whether that's a courthouse or in a garden or in your backyard, I mean, we're loving backyard weddings. Um, and then doing that virtually and live streaming it, I, I think is really cool. So I hope those things do stick around. I, I love the intimacy with it and it kind of brings the meaning back to, you know, why they're doing it in the first place, um, which is right. like romanticism in me. So. Right. Well, I mean, that's it. I mean, we, we're all creatives in this industry right. and, you know, we all um, have the ability to adapt and sort of overcome here. And um, that's the spirit that I think um, has really rang true uh, and through everyone that I've spoken with to this point. Um, it seems like everybody has a will and a way to figure this out and to yeah. make sure people get the day they deserve. Um, and that's important. You know, um, you know, I haven't talked to anybody yet. It's just like, ah, <laughs> no, I, just I, kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done, you know, okay. I'm giving up, you know, whatever. Um, but, um, but it is important to keep that mindset of, you know, well, here are our new challenges and here are ways that we can work around these challenges and, um, and make, uh, the day as special or as close to as special as possible. Right. Um, you know, this whole idea of virtual weddings and stuff, uh, and also, you know, I think is going to really expand. Um, I could really see it going to the point to where people are showing up and getting married and there's, you know, less people there than maybe what would be, but of, you know, people from all over the country watching on a, you know, through a camera on a, you know, whether it's a Zoom meeting or, or something that we have not yet seen or developed um, right. as far as technology is concerned, that's available to everyone. But I definitely believe this concept of a virtual wedding um, with the now adaptation of most people that work in business and, and um, in offices across the country are now working from home and, 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 and having conversations with their employers daily and clients daily virtually rather yeah. than in person or in an office. Um, you know, I think this is just a natural extension of the evolution that we're seeing in this, um, in this particular, in our particular career field, you know? Yeah. I mean, even sending like, um, one thing that I loved, uh, sending like a little box to everybody who couldn't attend um, had like, um, a program, it had like a champagne flute um, and like a little champagne split and just like a thank you. And so everybody was able to cheers together, you know, at one point. So it kind of, it brings that, you know, that family feeling, even though everybody might not, you know, be there, but it still, it still keeps everybody involved, which I think is nice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's really, uh, that is really cool. And, um, Wow, what times. Um, yeah, I mean, um, especially with the ticketed event side of your industry, I mean, it's, you know, that's a, that's a really tough one, you know, right yeah. now with, uh, with all of this. So let's talk about um, uh, your team and let's talk about uh, some of the people that you have on your team. Um, like, do you, uh, like how many extra consultants do you have? Um, you know, tell us about the infrastructure of your business. Yeah, so we keep our, our smart, like our crew um, or 
our core um, pretty small, to be honest. Um, we have so many amazing uh, people who have worked with us with multiple different events that we bring on, depending on what the event is. Um, with Charleston Food and Wine, we have a beverage director that we work with um, out of Columbia. We have another guy locally here um, that we always pull in for our ticketed events. Um, Monica Handles, uh, she's our marketing director in social media. She also uh, leads up the venue management and consulting side with me. Um, and then we have Amy who handles our weddings um, and social events and also assists with our ticketing events. Um, and then from there, they have kind of like their team uh, that we'll send out to help them with day up. So it kind of just depends on what we have going on. If it's a ticketed event for 75 people or if it's a ticketed event like food and wine where you're dealing with like 200,000 people. Um, right. And we, we set it up from there. But I, I always knew that, you know, with Intrigue, it's definitely going to continue to grow. And as we get into new things every single day, um, the team will definitely grow. Uh, but there's also something about keeping our family kind of smaller <laughs> as well. Right. Uh, so we're kind of on that, that in between. We're getting to the point to where with all of our venues that we're taking on and then um, the things sliding, I mean, with ticketed events, it's a little bit tricky right now. We're obviously not doing uh, large ticketed events, but we have been chatting with um, one of the venues that we manage about doing a smaller 25 to 30 person so that we can social distance. They can be six feet apart. Everybody has kind of like their own 10 by 10 square section that they can do. Um, and we can do dinners or murder mystery parties. Um, we even talked about like a Latin dance themed night, uh, just to be able to bring some sort of entertainment to people right now, um, but in a very, very safe environment as well. Our staff and our safety and the guest safety is our top priority. So making sure that we're following all guidelines and things of that nature, but it definitely looks a lot different. <laughs> Right, right. Wow. Um, well, your venues that you mentioned earlier, um, mm -hmm. do you exclusively work with some venues like where you have exclusive contracts with those? Um, and if so, like what, what are those venues? Yeah, so um, we, we have exclusive contracts in the sense of we manage and handle the sales and the implementation of the events. Um, but I love working with other creative people, especially planners and other designers. Um, I'm not one to shy away from those partnerships and relationships. Um, mm -hmm. To me, I mean, I know we're all supposedly like competitors, which is funny, but I just, I think that the more that we work together, just the more business that there is all around. So the venues that we manage any planner any design um, designer is welcome uh, if any client comes in and, and has someone that they're working with and they're able to do that um, on the ticketed side though we do handle those in-house uh, with intrigue so we would handle those exclusively um, one of our venues is called jackson cottages uh, that's actually where our office is it's super cool um, it's four old cottages um, that were built, I believe in like the 1800s. Um, and this development company came in and restored them back to their original um, face. So it was just, it's amazing what they were able to come in and create. I mean, these things were completely dilapidated and, and just worn down. But, um, but then it opens, so the four cottages line up in a row and then it opens up to this amazing courtyard uh, where we can do live entertainments. It's a wine and craft beer bar. Um, we have an awesome caterer on site. So uh, it's, it's growing. We, we launched it back in October and then March came, COVID hit. <laughs> um, and so we're just now kind of getting it back up and running. Um, and then another um, one that we have hasn't hit the market quite yet. We're supposed to open in November, um, but I know it's going to be called the Arbor Room. It's like 6,000 square feet. It's, um, it's something a little different for Charleston and which I actually really love. Um, it's an old warehouse that actually used to be a lumber yard. Um, and this guy, I'm giving you all the history. I know that most people don't really care, but um, this guy was actually, he went to World War II and then after World War II, he went to France and studied lumber um, and then brought all of the knowledge because we, I guess here weren't as vast in the knowledge of lumber and, and things of that nature. And so he came and he opened up the lumber yard. So um, it's still, the structure has, has been definitely um, redone but um, I love the story behind it um, and just that there's some history to it too uh, so that will be opening up soon um, but in the past we've uh, gutted um, Charleston homes and and re rebuilt them for for venues that was 
kind of what got us started uh, in the venue consulting about five years ago. So, wow, so, back to this this lumber uh, yeah. situation um, in in this warehouse that's been converted into this space. What will the primary uh, focus of that space be, and like, do they have secondary focuses as well? Yeah, so it's large enough for you know larger events. I think our capacity is going to be around two hundred and fifty, which I want to say there's probably a handful um, of venues in Charleston that can accommodate that many people in one location. Like a lot of our venues are um, subdivided in different locations, whether it's like outside or inside or, or it's an old house and you're split up in different rooms. Um, and it's bringing kind of like a modern twist to Charleston. Charleston can be very traditional um, in the sense of the, the design and the aesthetics and you know the old Charleston homes. Um, so this is definitely bringing a different, a different vibe uh, we're creating kind of this oasis atmosphere where we're going to bring a lot of live vegetation actually into the venue and we're going to have them on um, rollers so that you can move plants around the space and kind of create unique um, elements whether it's you know backdrop for a bar or band or ceremony um, but the the idea of it was to bring in for social events ticketed events um, but then larger weddings. Uh, Intrigue actually customized, um, well, we specialize in Indian weddings. So we have been doing Indian weddings for about eight years and love it. Um, and they're, the culture um, and the colorfulness and, and everything is really cool, but you need a lot of space <laughs> um, to do it because they have so many things going on. So the idea is just to maybe get people out of a ballroom and, and do something really cool um, in just a different space. Yeah, I mean, that's, that sounds really exciting. Um, and, yeah. you know, the idea of being able to wheel everything around and literally customize everything within this space, like that really gets me excited. Yeah. Um, you know, and also, I mean, having a modern space like that in a place where, you know, Charleston, which I've been to and I've seen and um, I've experienced uh, so many different places down there um, in, in my times uh, there, seeing everything, that is, in fact, something that is, probably going to be a pretty big breath of fresh air and probably in demand I would imagine <laughs> I, pretty I quick so. that's I'm, yeah. I'm praying <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah I mean we get so many with um you know Charleston I, I feel like Asheville and Charleston are kind of like sister um cities to each other um but with the breweries and everything kind of like building up in Charleston and that urban um kind of hipster vibe which I love so much is like they're looking for something that's unique and maybe a little bit different and yep. that's what i'm hoping this this offers too right wow we got the exclusive here yes uh on, i don't know uh, if i'm supposed to say all of that but it's okay <laughs> uh, we got the exclusive on swp right here for the new right. venue the new the new thing in charleston that's amazing yeah um how cool is that um so um at this time usually i like to ask a couple of questions about you and sort of getting to know you and exposing a little bit more. I mean, obviously everybody has experienced your personality at this point. Right. Um, you know, I, and then I like to ask, is that water or is that vodka in the glass? I wish it was vodka. I mean, honestly, <laughs> but I'm actually, I'm a tequila drinker. Tequila. Oh, okay. well, yeah, I guess it could be tequila could be too. Tequila. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, um, you know, the, I always like to ask a few questions just about you, just to get to know you so people have a better feel about who you are, because obviously they think you're awesome from listening to you so far. So, um, so here's a few questions, uh, almost like a lightning round, if you will, um, but uh, we can expand on these as much as you want. Um, tell me, if you're going to go somewhere uh, and you had the choice of beach or mountains, where are you going and why? Ooh. Well, you live on the beach. So I know, like, I was gonna say, so um, I'm actually like a, this is crazy, I never thought I would like this, but um, I love camping. Um, and my my other half got me started um, with tent camping. We have a, a Jeep and the tent goes on top of the Jeep. So at least I'm raised, that was a non-negotiable. I was like, I have to be off the ground. Um, <laughs> but we, uh, we have a tent that goes on top of the car and, uh, and we travel and I, I, the beach is awesome, but I mean, I do, we do live at the beach. So getting out into like the mountains and, and hiking and, um, and meeting people, um, that's just something that in the past, I'd say three years, um, has kind of become really close um, to my heart. So I would say, so does that, 
does this go does this go on the back of like a pickup truck and then it just built out from there or no so it actually goes on top of a jeep wrangler um it sits we have a rack um and it sits on top and then it folds out so it like does like a pop-up and folds out it's super cool um and it's large it's not like you would think that it's like this tiny little thing but um it's at least i'd say like a full size to a little bit larger than a full size bed um and then yeah you have all your like little cubbies to put stuff in and um we like we have a little ipad hanger so if we get caught in a storm then we can watch some movies or something so it's wow cool. Yeah, I have a walk, so I have I love to cook. Um, I'm just telling you all my things now, but um, tell me all your things. I have like a walk system that like stands up, and so I can make all of our meals on it. So from like breakfast, we made uh, huevos on it. We made um, stir fry on it one night. So mm. the options are endless. I love to cook. Wow. Well, yeah. since we're on food, let's talk about food. What like okay. what's uh, if I'm coming over to your house mm -hmm. and you're gonna cook me food? What are you cooking? What's your go-to? What's your, what's your, uh, what's your impressive dish mm. you've worked up? I, I love Mexican food. So it might be some sort of like fajitas or something. Um, but I also have like some secret like sauces and I'm like a sauce queen. So I love sauces on everything. Um, so we might do like a surf and turf with my secret sauce and some cool sides um i love seafood i've tried to roll like um sushi i wouldn't say i'm the best but we, i might i might pull that out i could do that so but, you have a secret okay. sauce <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you have a secret for real you have a secret sauce that you I do i have a couple secret sauces um okay i'll give you one and then that's it Okay, so one secret is going to be revealed right here on SWP. Let's one go. Secret. So this is honestly tasty on anything. You can put it on steak, chicken, potatoes, whatever. But um, I've had it since I was a little kid. So it's sour cream, sriracha, and Worcestershire. And you mix it together, and it becomes amazing. Nice. You have to like spicy. I like spicy food. I love spicy food. Yeah. I, I, I You can't make it spicy enough for me like if i'm not sweating i'm not i'm not satisfied right. so um well, for I'm me potatoes you eat it sour cream sriracha and worcestershire wow that's uh all right you heard it right here the secret sauce has been revealed I want everybody to try it and then come back and tell me how and then come back and then leave a comment right leave a comment and tell me how that is right um that's awesome um do you like sports or anything of the nature of that tell me do, do you yeah, so I grew up watching baseball with my family. My dad, poor soul, he has all daughters. So um, I wasn't, I wasn't the the sports growing up, but um, but now I we love going to baseball. Well, we like to go to baseball games again, but um, but love baseball and love football. Um, we have a hockey team in Charleston, and I really love to go watch the Stingrays. Um, but yeah, I like to watch them more in person than I do on actual television. But uh, so, so who's your baseball team? The Braves. I had a girl. Yeah. I knew we were friends. Oh yeah. For sure. I knew we were friends. <laughs> um, and also there's a hockey team in Charleston. Yeah. The Stingrays. I know. It's crazy. I, I had no idea. <laughs> I don't know if it's like double. They're like the one below. Like they get, they come to like train and practice. I think before they like go off, like one of the farm teams. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's like one of the uh, one of the the minor league, so to speak, right. teams. Exactly. I don't know what the, I don't know what that's called in hockey because I, I, I should. That's, I like I that's should. the one sport I'm not very good at. But then again, I never grew up in the Northeast or where that was like a you know a big thing. So um, but that's cool. I love the Braves too, and they are kicking butt right now, even though they lost Soroka for the year, and that really sucks because he was like my favorite. He was my favorite Brave, um, <laughs> I think, uh, or was fastly becoming that. Right. Um, Coffee or tea? Oh, coffee. Really? Mm -hmm. no. Well, okay, so can I preface? So I drink coffee during the day. Monica drinks tea all the time. Our marketing director, she is yeah. a avid tea person. Um, but I do drink tea every night before I go to bed. Mm. What kind of tea do you drink before you go to bed? I have right now, I'm on this um, lavender chamomile, um, but then I also have like this new, um, it's a probiotic, and then it has like lemon and raspberry flavors in it, which is really good. Delish. Yeah, what's, delish. The, what's the last book you read? 
Oh man, gosh. Um, I haven't honestly been reading a lot lately, which I that, should. My, you don't have to be embarrassed about that at all. No, I just, I'm, I'm not, I know we've been doing so many different projects that by the time I get home, I have a glass of wine and I go to bed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I have my tea and then I go to bed. Um, no, honestly, so like my sister, this is funny. She was reading this, um, and this, it might be embarrassing for me, but I really don't care. Um, <laughs> she was reading this series of, um, it's like a, my sister's also 30, so I don't know why she was even reading this either, but um, it's like a teen series of like a uh, crown or something. Um, it's, uh, it was something about, I can't remember the name of it, um, but this process that this family goes into. So there's like royalty and then the son um, has to go through, it's almost like the bachelorette, honestly, or the bachelor. <laughs> three or 30 girls that he has to pick from and then he has to actually marry one of these people and so I read probably like half of it and I was like this is just depressing my life right now so, <laughs> <laughs> oh man are, um, are you a, are you a bachelorette class, fan are you a bachelorette fan I haven't watched like I'm not like a diehard but I have caught like I don't think it was the last, I don't, I didn't watch the last season. It was just the season before that, um, that I watched, but I mean, it, it makes me feel better about my life sometimes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's not so bad, it's not right. so bad. but yeah, it's entertaining for sure. Right. Yeah. I, um, I watched about 15 minutes. Yeah. That's about and all what it takes. You're like, and I'm done. I was like, man, I can't do it. <laughs> I was like, I can't do this. My grandmother was all about it, though. My grandmother's 93, I think. Oh, I love and uh, I, I've just blanked on that. And if you ask me in two minutes, I'd tell you the, the real answer. But I think she's 93. And so she's obsessed with The Bachelorette or well, The Bachelor. Like the you new know? like soap popper. So that's why she likes it. She probably used to watch Days of Our Lives like my grandmother did. And right. The lighting one, I don't know, it has like a day, Days of Our Lives and something else, I don't know. But she was obsessed, and that's all she'd watch every day. I'd get home from school, from middle school, and we'd have to like sit and watch them. Right. So. Yeah, that's, well, there you go. That's it. Um, that's probably, uh, that's, you're probably right. I actually <laughs> never thought about that until now my wheels were spinning. I was like, did she watch all those shows? You know, I'm sure like, yeah, I, I'm sure at some point everybody does, right? Yeah. She's a she's a big game. She's a big like game show. She loves like Price is Right, you yeah. know, and like you know all that kind of stuff. So like she's she's super into uh, she all like those to play games? Yeah, she has a um she has like a a game called Skip Bow. Have you ever heard of that? No. It's like a it's it's this you know it's a game. She's like literally wore out one of the games and then bought a new version of it and hated it because it was the new version. And then she went and got the older version again online somewhere, or somebody got it for online, like a new, like a, just a not worn out version of the old traditional skip boat. So right. she plays that and she plays solitaire. She plays solitaire cribbage. She's like a big cards, you know, kind of game. She's um, you know, cribbage is a game. I've never learned how to play, but it's like yeah. extremely complicated. Um, and, uh, but um uh, my father looks after her every day, so they play cribbage, three games of cribbage every day. You need um, to get them um, phase 10. My grandmother plays phase 10. It's a card game, and she kicks our butt every single time. <laughs> so it's a fun game. My my grandmother is a fierce card player. She knows. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I'm from the Midwest, where I'm from, you know, euchre is a thing. That's like the big card yeah. game. So um, everybody knows how to play euchre, and, um, and so – she smokes just, you know, when my grandfather was alive, he was the best euchre player I've ever, I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, my grandmother's also, you know, a very, very good euchre player. So um, do you have a favorite band or what are you listening to these days? Uh, so I've been obsessed with my Alt-J station. Um, I love Alt-J. Um, my... We've, we've been, so I'm a big like festival person. I love mm -hmm. music festivals. Um, and uh, which ones? So we've been to ACL. Um, we've been to um, the one we just, we went to Sacramento. Um, 
think it was like a rock. It, it, honestly, it scared me a little bit. My other half is like into death tones and like hard metal music, but he's like the biggest nerd that you will ever meet in your entire life. So when you look uh, at him, you're like, really? Like you like metal music? What is this? Um, so he took me to um, Sacramento. We went to another one there. Um, we've been to Shaky Knees. I love Shaky Knees. We've been, there's actually one um, next year uh, in like Madrid or something. And we're like, should we? I mean, we haven't traveled in like obviously a year at that point. I was like, right. should we try to go to this? Um, but yeah, but I love um, like St. Paul and the Broken Bones. I don't know if anybody is familiar with them, but they've been one of my faves for a while. Um, yeah, my, uh, so like my, friend, my friend Kevin plays drums in that band. Really? Um, mm -hmm. Tell Kevin that I'm obsessed with them and we probably have followed them around to like four different festivals. <laughs> <laughs> they're awesome. We heard them in uh, actually Charleston. They played at um, the Spoleto finale um, a couple of years ago. And that's how we um, came to know who they were. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, that's awesome. Uh, shout out to Tim Sweetwood, uh, who puts on the Shaky Knees and the Shaky Boots Festival and um, yeah. the, the, their uh, electronic music uh, version of Shaky something. I can't remember. <laughs> Shanky Beats, yes. Yeah. Shanky Beats. So uh, he puts on all those. He also does the the one down in um, uh, down in Florida where they're like right on the ocean too. Um, and I can't remember the name of that one off. The top oh, the of Hangout. Head. Hangout. Yes, he does the Hangout. Yeah. You know, he's. Uh, well, tell him he needs to call me, and we need to chat because we do <laughs> sponsorship galore of things. So mm -hmm. I will make his sponsor spend more money if he yeah. hires me. <laughs> there you go i like that there you um go. yeah he does uh he does all those things and he's been i mean if you don't know about shaky knees at least check out shaky knees because yeah, that is amazing. probably one of the premier festival organization like situations that's happening across the you know and the hangout for that matter but shaky knees in particular i mean the lineups that they put together for those things are always just right. literally back to back unbelievable of bands of yesteryear that are uh still very edgy and still very cool um mm -hmm. to like the just the cutting edge of people that you are going to talk about seeing you know for the for 20 and 30 years that i saw them at this festival before they did this yeah um he just has a knack of finding those bands for that that festival and that's like to me like sort of the flagship that he that it's, he produces it's a talent it's a talent i can't imagine just dealing with the things that we deal with on a daily basis something on that caliber i mean it just you take it and you just amplify it but um they do an amazing job the way that they have the festival set up and the vip stuff and just the way that they orchestrate everything is is great mm -hmm. so big props yeah big props to tim he's uh he's doing great work there um so do you have any like hidden talents or hidden hidden things that we wouldn't expect that you like or do that we should know about? You're making me give away all my secrets today. Well, that's the plan. That's my whole, that's why we're here. I just want to get all your secrets. Um, so yeah, funny story. Um, I, well, one of my things, I guess you would never know, but when I first moved to Hilton Head, um, before I had started my business, I didn't know anybody. My family lived there. My little sister was going through some changes with going from like what eighth grade into high school. So that was like a big, a big adjustment for her. But um, there's nothing to do on Hilton Head except for play golf or to go to a bar or a restaurant. It's <laughs> um, so I found a little hole in the wall and um, and met some friends and I learned how to play pool. And I am officially a pool shark now. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Like, how do you get the certification for a pool shark? You win a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so you're like really good at pool. You're like really actually, good at, at I'm pool. actually really, really good at pool. Um, I, my first date with, uh, with my partner now was at a, um, at a pool hall, I was like, look, like I have a Wednesday off. Let's try to see if this is a thing or not. Um, and we played pool and I told him the only way that he got a second date is if he actually beat me. And by the fourth game, he did beat me. I kind of probably let him win, but I'm actually really good at pool. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, you know, there's, um, we all can't be, you know, us men, we can't be good at everything. You know, we can't, 
it's just, it's impossible, you know? He's gotten better since. He's gotten better since. He would kill well, me if I was saying this because he still claims that he won all the games, but he really didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, us men, we got to keep our, uh, you know. Got to keep your clout. That's right. We got to keep our status yeah. and, our, and our clout and stuff. All right. Um, and, uh, I always love to ask this question at the very end. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, but, um, but let's, uh, I want to ask this question. Um, tell us uh, the biggest piece of advice that's really helped you with your career to this point. And I know there's a lot of them, I'm sure. But what's something that you would give to our listeners that uh, maybe are interested in getting into the field or, um, you know, just maybe you need a word, you know, because everybody needs a word from time to time. Yeah. Give us your word. So I would say it's funny. I just had this conversation with um, a girl in Columbia. Um, again, another one of my brides reached out and was like, hey, I don't know if you do this, but um, I have a friend who is going from corporate planning and really wants to get into wedding planning. You know, would you spend 15 minutes and chat with her? Um, and honestly, like, I think one of the biggest things that I advocate for is that we actually have a internship program with the College of Charleston here. We've had it for about a little over eight years um, where we bring on interns from, um, they can come on for a semester or they can stay on for two semesters. Uh, and it's something that like has just really, I, I've seen like help guide people to really get an understanding and kind of get, get in the trenches with us, understand what a day of looks like, understand all the back work that it takes, um, so I would say that if you're interested, you know, as much as it might stink, just do some, some internships, even if they're unpaid internships at, at this point, because as much as you go through and you can go through and get your certification as a wedding planner and you can take all these classes. And I'm not saying that those aren't great to give you kind of like that foundation, um, that you need, but the hands-on experience is by far the most, you know, pressing thing that I could recommend um, for someone to do. So maybe reach out to um, some local planners that are around and just see if they need some assistance and then go from there. Uh, and e even just to find out if this is something that from a career standpoint that you really do wanna do. Um, we've ran into situations where uh, someone's got married and then they're just like, I wanna be a planner now, this was so much fun. I planned my own wedding and I was like, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't really work like that. But I mean, if you do get a passion like me, I mean, I did that one wedding and then I was like, okay, like this is something really cool. What do I need to do, you know, to kind of take the steps, but make sure you take the steps um, in order to set yourself up for success. Um, mm -hmm. and then go from there. I feel like in today's entrepreneur world where it's very glamorous to be an entrepreneur, it's like, Right. You know, it's really sexy to kind of say that so than ever, um, you know, I feel like the idea of apprenticeship and um, internship and, you know, literally just working even mm -hmm. for another person to learn the ropes and to learn the intricacies of the business is far undervalued these days. And yeah. um, I also, um, you know, also think that, you know, these people uh, that we're speaking about that are thinking about getting into it, um, just really taking the time. Mm -hmm. to sit down and really think this through before you throw caution to the wind and you go start yeah. your own company. <laughs> with, the, with the exception of you, of course, you're like the, one of the few exceptions yeah. that make it, you know what I mean? There's, I, it's, it's a rea the reality is, is that a lot of people start doing this just shooting from the hip and they fail. And the reason right. why they fail is because they didn't have any experience. They didn't take the time to research and they didn't take the time to, sure. um, to get to know uh, the business and how it works. Yeah. So. And I think that going into it, like just, I mean, for even for me, I mean, it took me a good four years, um, close to five years before I was really like, okay, like we're, we're seeing, we're seeing out of the red now we're, we're going into the green. Um, but I mean, it wasn't until about four years in that I had my first office and then, you know, I got my first employee and then like things started growing, you know, adapting from there. But I mean, don't kid yourself either. And I'm not, I'm very, I try to stay very humble in the sense of I am constantly learning. There are things out there and programs and softwares and, and things that we are just all obviously trying to make sure that we're staying ahead of the time um, and whatever that looks like of how we can better serve our clients. So even, you know, from the beginning to the end, if you ever stop learning, then it's just, you get bored <laughs> and you, you don't want to, you don't want to stay in it. So, um, so just don't give up either. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard, but, but push through that and hopefully you'll get where you want to be. 
I love it. And I think that's a great place to wrap here. Thanks again to Chelsea yeah. Hart from Intrigue. We thank you so much for being on our podcast and I hope that you will come back very, very soon. I would love to. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. And uh, until next time, take care and uh, we'll see you next time.